I made a mistake. I recently uploaded a video where I was solving the Oxford MAT question dx squared minus d minus 1x plus d equals 0 and I have this here and I was reading the comments and I realized someone pointed out a big mistake that I had made. So if you haven't watched that video, go and watch that video now. But I'm going to be addressing this comment here, which basically says that I only looked at real values of d and I didn't actually consider complex values of d as well, which is a possibility. It doesn't mention anything here about d being a real number. So I'm going to address that here. So let's just go over what this question was asking. It says, depending on the value of the constant d, the equation dx squared minus d minus 1x plus d equals 0 may have two, one, or no real solutions. And we want to know for how many values of d does it have just one real solution. And in the question, I ended up deducing that the answer was three. There are three values of d for which this equation has no, uh, has, sorry, one real solution. But those are only three real values of d. What about if d is complex? So let's say d is a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers. Well, if I just substitute that into here, I get a plus b i x squared, plus, uh, sorry, minus a plus b i minus 1 x plus a plus b i equals 0. And if I just kind of separate the real and imaginary parts, I get a minus, uh, sorry, a x squared, what am I doing? Yeah, a x squared minus uh, a minus 1 x plus a plus, and then i times, so bx squared minus bx, sorry, bx squared minus bx plus b equals zero, like so. And now what we want is we want this equation that I've got here to have exactly one real solution x. Now, in order for it to be a real solution, so in order for x in the reals, oh, that's horrible, x in the reals to solve this equation, which I'll call star, we need both, we need both, or we need two equations to be true. We need um, ax squared minus a minus 1x plus a to equal 0. And we need this imaginary part to be 0 as well. So bx squared minus bx plus b to be 0, like so. Now, we're going to focus on this second equation here first. If I factor out the b from this, I get b times x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. And here's the beautiful part. We we're only interested in x to be a real number to be a solution to this. If x is a real number, then x squared minus x plus 1 is going to be strictly positive. How do I know that? Well, if I look at this quadratic here and I consider its discriminant, the discriminant of this is minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is, well, negative 3. But in particular, it's a negative number. So if I was to sketch this graph, y equals x squared minus x minus 1, it turns out it's going to have a minimum when x is a half. And it's going to look something like this. It has no real solutions because the discriminant's negative. And that means for all real values of x, this quadratic in, uh, takes a positive value. And so the only way that this can equal 0 is if b itself is 0. But if b itself is 0, we can go back to what d is. d must therefore just be a real number. So I didn't actually consider it in the original question, in the original video I made. But d does have to be a real number in order for this to have one real solution. But I hadn't actually completed it in full, so it wasn't a full solution. I made a mistake. Um, so d is a real number, and then you can apply the logic I had originally in this video. So again, if you haven't watched this video, go back and watch it. Um, and you can see that the answer is three values um, of d. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And yeah, in the future, if I do make mistakes in videos, you know, I'm human, I will. Uh, just let me know in the comments and I'd love to address this. Uh, shows that, you know, genuine mathematicians do make mistakes and uh, that's how we learn from them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.